it's been years since I've actually seen Nina in person, but I remember many times uh, meeting with her in Pittsburgh. Um, Nina is going to be presenting on strategic planning and decision making challenges uh, in education for us. So uh, it's very exciting. Nina, uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, is a dean of the Faculty of Organization and Informatics in Verazden, University of Zagreb in Croatia, and associate professor in information science. Um, uh, her her uh, subject of her doctoral thesis at the same university was on multi-criteria decision-making models for strategic planning of e-learning implementation. So we're truly getting uh, this presentation from a source of expertise. Um, a little bit of background, uh, main areas of, of her research and professional work are in business decision-making, uh, multi-criteria decision-making methods, uh, decision theories, and e-learning. Um, she is a JFDP fellow, and she was working at the Katz Graduate School of Business at the University of Pittsburgh uh, in the framework of the JFDP program of the U.S. Department of State. Um, uh, Nina is a member of the editorial board of the IJAHP Journal, uh, which is the International Journal of the Analytic Hierarchy Process, which I encourage everybody here to, um, to access and, and read when you get a chance. Uh, and she is also a member of the program board of the Central European Conference on Information and Intelligent Systems. And so very excited to have Nina present this plenary session. And Nina, over to you. Thank you, thank you for this really nice introduction. So I will start with my topic. My topic is strategic planning and decision-making challenges in education. And I will talk something about higher education today and challenges in higher education. And also I will present a methodology for strategic planning and decision-making in higher education institution. And also I will try to present some of our recommendations, how to uh, do digital, digital transformation of higher education institution and how to use a well-known analytic hierarchy process and an analytic network process in strategic planning and decision-making in higher education institution. So first, something about challenges in higher education today. Um, I think that we can say that higher education institution today must be focused on solving problems and must be sensitive to customer needs because they must stay competitive and also to, to, to be sensitive to, to students' needs, but also to teacher needs. I think also that higher education institution must strive for interdisciplinarity of their study programs, because this interdisciplinarity of study pro programs of, of higher education institution can boost the creative thinking, problem solving. And I think that employability of these students um, with focus on the interdisciplinary fields is uh, higher than uh, if, they, uh, if they are students of interdisciplinary uh, uh, study programs. Also, I think that higher education institution must implement innovative concept of teaching and learning, focused on project-based learning, problem-based learning, work-based learning, and also to use critical thinking and creative thinking and problem solving. Maybe the most um, important challenge today for higher education institution is digital transformation. Because higher education has become a part of a global shift to a new way of creating and using knowledge and teaching and learning by using digital technology. And uh, higher education uh, institutions have realized the importance of digital technology and how important it is to use digital uh, technology to increase uh, the quality of teaching and learning, and also how to regulate and monitor quality of technology use in education today is a challenge. Um, based on our experience in pandemia, COVID pandemia, uh, we know that today managers of higher education institution must know how to lead institution through a crisis, 
must be capable to cope with the crisis. So crisis leadership, crisis management, it's very important today for higher education institutions. So first challenge, uh, we will start with the digital transformation. Uh, how to perform digital transformation uh, in higher education institution in a decisive way is definitely one of the main challenges of higher education institutions today. So if we want to present uh, the challenges in education with focus on digital transformation, we can uh, talk about Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, definitely uh, security, accessibility, and also how to provide customized learning experiences for our students. Maybe buzzwords, but definitely present and future of higher education institutions are learning analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Because learning analytics and artificial intelligence, they're playing important role today in analyzing student learning. And based on the obtained results and analysis, we can prepare recommendations on how to improve and how to customize learning approach for our students. How to use digital technology uh, and how we can make it easier for students uh, of different learning times types I'm to sorry. learn. Just real quickly, Nina. So I think our slides are not aligned with where you are in the presentation. Um, I don't know okay. if you can see the slides, but Ellen, I think you need to back up like four slides. Uh, okay, right now I'm on fourth slide. You can see it. Yes. Uh, so the one that you're on, it says HE today digital transformation yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. if you could just let elena know when to advance that would be uh, great. Okay. thank you okay sorry okay so i'm on fourth slide and i'm talking about digital technology and um i think that digital technology can make it easier for students um, of different learning types to learn and uh, for example, uh, we can use learning management system, we can use gamification, modeling tools, artificial intelligence, and definitely learning analytics to prepare recommendations on how to improve and how to increase the quality of teaching and learning. Okay, I think next slide. Why to use digital technology in higher education institution? Uh, first, to enhance competencies and skills of students and teachers, uh, and also to boost readiness for facing challenges in the labor market for our students. Uh, how to boost this readiness for facing challenges in problem solving and decision making in the labor market? Definitely, uh, it is important to use these innovative concepts and methods of teaching and learning. Um, I already mentioned, but I will repeat, these innovative methods and concepts of teaching and learning are project-based learning, are hybrid learning, definitely e-learning and massive open online courses. And why to use this project-based learning and work-based learning? Because it is important for our, our students to provide the real experience, um, to solve the problems uh, in real environment, uh, to, to have this kind of interaction with, uh, with companies, uh, to work in teams, uh, and also to, to um, organize some kind of job shadowing because this is very important for them when they finish their study and when they will start working. Uh, also, um, this situation today uh, with digital technology, with labor market, with turbulent environment, these changes demand actions and decisions in educational institutions. And we need to define more complex, more demanding mission 
more demanding vision and also use methodology for strategic planning and decision making in higher education institution. Please next slide. What are the aspects of successful digital transformation? Definitely supportive organizational culture in higher education institution, improving decision making process, and also our organization must become a data informed or data driven data centric organization and decision making and strategic planning must be based on the uh, well known methodology proved methodology. And we must adopt a new methods and techniques for strategic planning and decision making. Next slide, please. What happened uh, with decision making in decision makers in higher education institution when we were in pandemia, COVID pandemia? Managers of higher education institution were, were playing a range of roles. For example, they were communicator, uh, chief communicators to school communities, uh, providers of technology, uh, launcher of online learning platforms, logis logistic managers, sometimes tracers of the virus. And also they were very important as a support, emotional support for faculty, for students and staff. And what happened? Uh, the huge number uh, of principals, deans, managers of higher education institutions leaving the profession because of the burnout, because of increasingly demanding working conditions. So my conclusion is that managers of higher education institution must know how to lead higher education institution to a crisis, must be prepared, must know how to use uh, methods for strategic planning, how to make a decision uh, in crisis, and how to use uh, knowledge, uh, how to use uh, decision-making methods for making more quality decisions. Next slide, please. There is a huge need right now for implementing decisive decision-making and managers of higher education institution must have the ability to make quick, clear and well thought out decisions under constraints. For example, in pandemia, in COVID pandemia, uh, there were a lot of political challenges and crisis decisions for example, tensions sometimes between university autonomy and levels of government. Also, um, there were a need to transit to virtual learning overnight, but with limited and rapidly changing guidance and with limited resources. So there is a really a huge need for knowledge and competencies for crisis management. Please, next slide. That's the reason uh, why we um, modify uh, a framework for managers of higher education institutions for crisis leadership, Smith and Riley's uh, framework for managers of higher education institution for crisis leadership. And uh, this framework can be used to interpret and to analyze decision-making of higher education institution managers and can be some kind of framework template how to make a decision in crisis. Here, um, we can identify uh, five processes for responding uh, to a crisis. First, it is important uh, to implement data-driven decision-making and to gather information about the crisis. Also, it is important to create and implement a well-defined plan and revise this plan if this is needed. To implement also decisive decision-making, rational decision-making, but also sometimes individual autocratic decision-making when it is crisis and um, time pressure, 
but also to uh, implement participation in decision making and group decision making and rational decision making methods. Also, it is important to show concern for the well being of others, for the well being of institution and people in institution, and also always demonstrate open and honest communication. We can go further. Also, some other advice is how to lead higher education institution in crisis. Maybe just to present four ways to stay present and uh, what leaders must do. Definitely face your face emotions. Show respect for the situation, but also for the institution and for the staff. Make connections between, uh, between staff but also make connection with other institutions, with other partners, and definitely stay and be positive. We can go further. Here you can find um, some kind of framework um, for crisis manage management, uh, framework for leaders in education. And we can define four stages, stages in crisis management. Uh, prevention, preparedness, re uh, preparedness, response, and recovery. And what about uh, actions? Definitely uh, goal development, go objective, uh, define, defining objectives, goal development, environment analysis, um, develop strategy, uh, do implementation, but also control, and definitely as a final phase, do evaluation. What is else important? Community trust and collaboration between people and community support. Communication must be two way. Uh, communication must be accessible, must be transparent. And key attributes are communication skills, decisive decision making, creative thinking in crisis, uh, intuition, but mostly rational decision-making, empathy and flexibility. And values of the leaders and ethics are, are the most important characteristics in crisis. We can go further. Some of the approaches uh, that we can implement uh, in this kind of situation. Definitely uh, focused must be on the people, but also we must stream to define goals and objectives and our strategy. Uh, first uh, and best interest must be, uh, uh, the highest priority must be the best interest uh, of students and our staff and safety and data driven. So we must analyze the data and trying to make a decision based on the available, available data. Next slide. Sometimes it is important to um, implement individual decision making and make decision without consulting in few situations. For example, uh, when it is safety uh, the, the uh, highest priority, then we can implement uh, time uh, driven decisions about safety. But when we can, we must implement shared consultative decision-making styles and gather feedback on the solutions, on the alternatives from our staff and leadership team. Also, we must use transparent communication. And when a decision is made to communicate with the stakeholders uh, that will be affected, informed about the problem, about alternatives, and we will collect the feedbacks from them, respond to questions and concerns they may have. Also, as a final phase and very important phase is evaluation and metrics, uh, learning analytics, metrics, quantitative, qualitative indicators behind the choices and adjust based on feedback and based on the obtained results. Next slide, please. Some of the recommendations, um, 
Definitely managers of higher education institution must be aware of characteristics of different decision-making approaches and styles. Use um, data-driven uh, decision-making styles and use autocratic approach if this approach is needed in a situation with time pressure or when we can use individual decision-making as the only alternative. Uh, a manager's job in shared decision-making definitely is not to make decisions alone, but to empower the group to make wise decisions and quality group decision-making. And also it is very important to communicate decisions with students and with staff because participation in decision-making is important when we want to implement our decisions. Next slide, please. Something about digital technology and digital transformation and how we can implement methodology for strategic planning and for decision-making that we have developed. And I will present this methodology in a few minutes. But first, uh, just maybe to um, highlights uh, why digital technology in higher education institutions change the way we learn, we teach, we research, we make business. And strategic planning and decision making on digital technology implementation in higher education institution uh, today uh, and in most of higher education institutions were not focused on addressing main higher education or business objectives. Uh, it is approached as a technical solution and not strategically implement in higher education institution. Also, uh, it is not being planned uh, without allocation of resources, without defining priorities, indicators, and objectives. And it's often a bottom-up decision-making and not top-down decision-making, and it is not being evaluated. So sustainability of digital transformation and implementation of digital technologies is questionable. Also evaluation and without preparing strategy and without preparing action plan, it is definitely not successfully implementation of digital technology or digital transformation of higher education institution. Next slide, please. So it is important to use methodology for strategic planning uh, and decision making. We have developed this methodology and tested methodology in e-learning uh, uh, implementation and digital transformation of higher education institutions in the scope of our scientific project. And uh, some of other recommendations. It is important for all target groups and stakeholders to participate in this kind, of, this kind of decision and implementation of decisions. It is important to use different sources for implementation and finance because uh, we must think of sustainability. And also uh, we need to define objectives and to prepare strategy but, but also to prepare and to plan activities for sustainability of project results and to define responsibilities, to define indicators, to define deadlines, and also to define resources that are available for reaching these objectives. Next slide, please. To being a competitive higher education institution, uh, we must take more responsibility for our future planning because today higher education institutions and uh, foster the quality of teaching, uh, potential of international relevance, internationalization, uh, research, and also to um, give a contribution to the development of local, national, and international uh, economy and society. And uh, the conclusion is that there is a huge need for strategic planning, management, and governance in higher education. 
Next slide, please. So now I will present our methodology for strategic planning. It is a combination um, of different methods and techniques for strategic planning, but also for decision making. And our methodology for strategic planning, it was tested in digital technology integration in higher education institution in Europe. And it consists of several techniques and methods recommended for development uh, of important strategic documents. Uh, we tested uh, the list of methods and techniques uh, based on the criteria and their implementation uh, for phases uh, in methodology for strategic planning and decision making. And we choose the best techniques and met methods. And we are, uh, rec uh, and our recommendation is to use these techniques and methods for strategic planning and decision making uh, in higher education institution. Our intention was to have a manual uh, or some kind of set of easy to use guidelines that can be applicable for all universities and higher education institution. And um, our first focus was strategic planning of digital transformation, but now we are using this methodology for strategic planning and decision making for other issues and strategic questions and objectives that we are defining um, on the level of uh, higher education institutions. Next slide, please. So here you can find the cycle of strategic decision making. That was our first step. First uh, phase intelligence, we uh, identify problem and research. Advancement, we were working on advance, advancement of methodologies such as read, readiness assessment, diffusion of innovation. And we have tested a lot of methods and techniques for identification of the problem, but also for strategic planning and decision making. Then we start with second uh, phase of our cycle, designing methodology. And our primary research goal was to design decision making methodology um, and to improve multi-criteria decision analysis uh, enabling better strategic decision making in higher education. Then the third phase was to do uh, and to perform research uh, and identification of factors, criteria, indicators that uh, define effectiveness of strategic decisions, also uh, their co correlation and design also model for maturity and effectiveness of strategic decision implementation in higher education. And fourth phase evaluation um, we um, perform survey and we analyze possible approaches and evaluation by using Perl structural causal models for identification of effects of strategic decisions. Next slide, please. And first, we modify a methodology for strategic planning in educational institution based on the strategy continuum in university. And we use this uh, strategy continuum um, in um, implementing uh, ICT um, uh, in educational institution. And we perform uh, and implement this adoption strategy continuum um, in three phases, uh, following the three questions. First question was, um, what is the university's present position in terms of digital technology integration? Uh, the first phase was, uh, as always in strategic planning, uh, present state analysis or situation analysis and uh, definition of mission. Then the second uh, phase was uh, to define core values and vision. Uh, so the question was, where does the university want to be in the future? Uh, we were focusing on ICT and digital technology, but this question, this phase can be implemented um, in solving some other uh, problems in higher education institutions. And the third phase was strategic initiatives, strategic goals, and also preparing action plan. 
Uh, and the question was, how will the university reach uh, its desired position? And you can also see the, the, the picture on this slide. Uh, it is adoption strategy continuum in university. And you can follow these questions and you can see uh, based on this question, how to prepare and how to use this methodology and uh, also to cope with some of the defined problems on strategic level uh, of your institutions. Next slide, please. And here you can find also methodology for strategic planning in educational institution. You can see the list uh, of use methods and an analytical tools. tools. Um, there are four phases uh, of methodology for strategic planning. The first one uh, phase was environmental scanning uh, or situation analysis. Uh, then strategy formulation as a second phase, uh, strategy implementation as a third phase, and evaluation and control as a fourth phase of this methodology. And we uh, were testing uh, a lot of methods and techniques uh, in these four phases. And based on our experience and based on a lot of uh, cases that we have uh, performed and implemented in Croatia, but other countries in Europe, we um, recommended this uh, methodology. And our recommendation is to use this list of methods and analytic tools in these four phases of methodology for strategic planning in educational institution. So in the first phase, environmental scanning to do situation analysis, definitely uh, some of the methods that are on our list and they are the part of our, uh, our methodology, mm, well-known um, strength, weakness, opportunities, and trends uh, analysis, but also some other, some other uh, use method or uh, recommended method for situation analysis. Then in the second phase, uh, we can do some kind of mission statement, uh, creation of the mission statement, creating the vision statement, um, identification of strategic in initiatives, and also identification of strategic goals. We are um, using SMART approach, uh, also some other uh, methods that we are um, that we can recommend as a brainstorming and focus group as a priority in this phase. Then uh, strategy implementation, translation of chosen strategy into action and to prepare the action plan to achieve strategic goals and objectives and encouraging policies and programs also use strategic leadership and also uh, some kind of data visualization for strategy mapping. And evaluation and control phase, definitely precise uh, metrics for goals and activities, KPIs, and also define the period uh, of evaluation and taking corrective action. Please, next slide. Here you can find also some kind of template uh, that we can uh, that we modified for preparing action plan. Uh, and uh, this action plan is uh, definitely important for a sustainability of our strategy, defining objectives and uh, activities that we must define in the scope of this action plan. The main elements are uh, uh, activities for achieving strategic goals, key performance uh, indicators, responsibility, and also um, deadlines and uh, required resources. Next slide, please. So uh, recommendation. Strategic planning must be step-by-step -step development, um, must be um, uh, both on ministry, university side, local government side. Um, it is important to enhance the capacities for strategic planning and decision making. I think it is important to use top-down, but also bottom-up leadership define goals on different levels and to pre prepare roadmaps. Indicators must be simple, must be measurable, and must be a part of action plan. 
Without resources, the action plan is not good. So we must define information, time, people, and funding, define deadlines and responsibility. And definitely as a leader of higher education institution, ensure uh, additional funding for focused strategic development. And definitely do digital transformation of education and science and monitoring and evaluation of results. Next slide, please. And decision making after strategic planning. Decision making is definitely a central part of the manager, uh, manager's role. And decision making is um, heart of planning. Uh, but despite the link with planning, decision making is a main core element of the entire management process. Next slide, please. Some of the characteristics of strategic decisions in higher education. Um, decision making in higher education is specific because higher educations are higher education institutions are institutions that produce knowledge. And institutions are owners of the products. Um, and owners of the products are experts, researchers, teachers uh, at higher education institution. Uh, this value system in higher education uh, is usually crucial, crucial um, and the most important in strategic decisions. It is uh, maybe a longer, uh, long-term time frame. Uh, in higher education institution because it includes period of uh, five years opposite to the two or three years uh, in industry. Uh, also, uh, it is needed to reach consensus for top-down decisions in higher education institution and that uh, requesting the participation of all stakeholders. stakeholders. The final client is not defined, and um, it is tradition of slow process of change in higher education institution. And higher education, ha higher education institution, they are having a special status uh, as a public as a public good. Next slide. Also, I put here the well-known uh, room yet on decision styles model because uh, sometimes it can be useful for uh, decision making in higher education institution because it is questionable when to use autocratic decision making styles and when to use consultative and when to use group decision making in which kind of situation we uh, need to use autocratic and in which kind of situation group decision making. So uh, this is a decision styles model with a lot of questions. And when we are answering on this question, we can uh, get some kind of recommendation which uh, decision styles to use in which kind of, in which situations. Next slide, please. And now we are um, uh, we are coming to methodology for decision making and decision making methodology um, in higher education institution. It is a mapping of, of perspective, dimension, and a lot of methods uh, or methodology. And here we are uh, based on our research uh, and based on a lot of cases that we have performed uh, and a lot of methods that we have implemented for decision making in higher education institutions. We have developed a methodology for decision making and uh, also do validation of this methodology and some of the methods and models of individual and group decision making. And um, we use uh, strategic planning and decision making um, focusing on uh, HP and ANP um, for resource allocation, but also for prioritization and for choosing the best alternative. 
For risk management, we used Monte Carlo simulation and risk metrics. And also for personal decisions in higher education institution, for prioritization and ranking, um, also uh, AHP and sensitivity analysis, Electra, and also for uh, effectiveness of education, data and development analysis. Okay, next slide, please. And here you can find the methodology for decision making based on the four phases of the cycle and based on our research. In the first phase, identification, uh, identification and research of the problem, uh, we were using uh, some of the methods uh, for uh, needs and situation analysis, readiness, and also uh, readiness assessment. For doing situation analysis, stakeholder um, uh, involvement, uh, e-readiness, uh, we were using structural equation modeling, social network, some methods for situation analysis. And this, here you can find the list of methods that we are um, this, this is the list of methods. It is our recommendation which methods to use for each phase of methodology for decision making based on our research results in the scope of uh, several projects, several scientific projects and our research. Also development in the second phase, development of methodology for decision-making, definitely uh, the highest priority. And our recommendation is to use the analytic hierarchy process uh, for uh, benchmarking of higher education institution and also to um, use uh, analytic network process for modeling dependencies and for performing group decision making uh, in higher education institution. Then implementation and strategic monitoring, balance scorecard method as the best method for this part of the methodology for decision making, and also evaluation of the effects, uh, some qualitative methods as stakeholder perspective, document analysis, uh, in-depth case study, or well-known Delphi method. Or uh, if we want to use quantitative methods, then economic, uh, econometric analysis, uh, analysis, cost-benefit analysis, and also multi-criteria decision-making methods, uh, definitely uh, HP and definitely ANP method. Next slide, please. So you can find uh, here in the next four slides, some of the details. Uh, of each uh, of first, uh, second, third, and four phases of, uh, of uh, our methodology for decision making. So I think that this presentation will be available so you can uh, see the details of these phases and the methods that we are, that we are uh, uh, recommending. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, just to uh, see the next slide, uh, because first one is identification research of an issue, then the second is design of decision making methodology, but we can go further and see some of the some of the design of decision making methodology and implementation and monitoring of strategic decision but i will um, i will uh, skip this part because it's a lot of details so if uh, somebody will be uh, i can send a presentation on we can maybe start uh, discussing after this presentation and now um, I will go to our, uh, my next slide. Uh, it's uh, some of the cases that um, I want to present, but only sh uh, shortly, because uh, we were using the HP as a, a part of this second phase of our methodology, but uh, using the cases in higher education uh, institutions. So this uh, first slide is case one, is selection of the candidate for job position at higher education institution. We use, uh, we were using the HP uh, and um, methodology for decision making uh, and this second phase in HP uh, in this um, specific problem 
uh, several times at our institution, but also uh, I will uh, I was consulting uh, some other higher education institution how to use the HP for selection of the candidate for the best job position. So you can see here, it is a lot of criteria and sub criteria, and it is um, a group decision-making. We were using group decision-making and we were using uh, decision lens, decision lens software. This is one of the cases, but we were using also uh, super decision software or Excel and some other, um, and some some other alternatives, uh, also to use the HP for selection of the best candidate. Okay, next slide. Also, we have used the NP, uh, NP method, uh, analytic network process, uh, to prepare project portfolio or to do some kind of prioritization of project uh, in higher education institution at university level, but also at faculty level. Also, we uh, developed NP uh, model for project portfolio and for prioritization of project. And we were using uh, this uh, NP, um, this NP uh, model, uh, BOCR, uh, for implement and implementing this uh, model um, at our university, but also several other university in Slovenia, in Bosnia, and also in Austria. So uh, next slide, please. So here you can find uh, some of the examples uh, how we were using uh, NP, a benefits, cost, and risk network for project portfolio. And we were modifying our model that we have developed uh, also and customized this model for some other cases uh, in other countries and universities. Next slide, please. And here you can find the case, the third case uh, we were using, and now we are using also the HP based model for decision making on e learning implementation for our study programs. Because uh, it is very important in Croatia at our university uh, to make a decision. Uh, which type of uh, teaching and learning uh, is priority for our study programs. So here you can, uh, you can see uh, one of the cases that we were developed and we also use this uh, model for uh, decision making um, of uh, the best, uh, the best um, uh, type of uh, teaching and learning for our study programs, because uh, we can choose if we want to, uh, if we want to uh, have uh, e-learning approach uh, and to see maybe if we want to uh, prepare online study program uh, and provide uh, this online study program, or maybe hybrid or face to face and now we are using the HP model and group decision making uh, to choose uh, and to make a strategic decision uh, which type of um, teaching and learning we will implement in our study programs and definitely this is group decision making and dean and vice deans or uh, rector and vice rector they are uh, performing group decision making based on our uh, developed model thank you next slide and why we uh, were choosing uh, HP and our recommendation is to use HP and to use NP and definitely group decision making in this, in this kind of cases, because such group decision making enables multi criteria analysis, uh, increases and systemized knowledge of the problem, motivates decision makers, um, leads to analytical results and analytical results are important for this kind of strategic decisions in higher education institutions. And it captures, it incorporates uh, diverse viewpoints. And uh, for us, it's crucial to collect uh, the judgments and um, incorporates viewpoints uh, of uh, few 
two or three vice rectors or vice deans to integrate their judgments and to uh, obtain some kind of decision and that we can implement uh, at our institution. And definitely it speeds up decision-making process. So I think that I can conclude that the HP is definitely and the NP is definitely the best, best uh, approach in this kind of problems. And the HP-based group decision-making allows decision makers to make critical decisions faster, more effectively, uh, in a way that truly really captures their priorities. Next slide. So how to ensure sustainability? Definitely use rational uh, approach to strategic planning and decision-making. Revise the uh, prepare, but also revise strategy and action plan if this is needed. Use data-driven decision-making and share decision-making in higher education institution, but also put priorities and upskilling education of teachers, staff, students, raising the level, increasing the level of digital competencies of our teachers, researchers, but also students, increase strategic commitment and develop quality policy model. Also continuously revise curriculum and implementing innovative concepts of teaching and learning. Prepare action plan, but also ensure and reallocate resources based on the priorities, but also ensure support to our teachers and students. And find new sources of financing and definitely, definitely implement innovative concept of teaching and learning. Thank you. Next slide. Thank you. I hope that that was okay. If there is any questions or something, I open. I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, Nina. Um, really, really interesting presentation. And yeah, please, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Well, first of all, this is. Uh, this is really an important uh, presentation because this is not an academic research, but it's really more than that. It's, uh, all this has been used in practice in, in the University of Zagreb. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, uh, when using HP, AMP within the context of strategic decision-making, in, in practice, what is the major challenge you think that uh, organizations face or managers face to really uh, implement this or use this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, very good question. <laughs> That's always a risk. But we are uh, we are really uh, implementing the HP and ANP, not only at our university, but other universities, for example, University of Rijeka, some other uh, institution in Austria, Slovenia, Serbia, we are using the HP. Um, we developed our models and then we start with a short presentation of the HP uh, just to present uh, some uh, what is the HP, why uh, to motivate uh, to motivate them for using the HP. And I'm always starting with um, with results. Okay, we will get, you will get uh, some weights of criteria, priorities of alternatives. So we will spend like, I don't know, two hours uh, of discussing and collecting judgments. But after two hours, you will uh, get some kind of weights of criteria, uh, priorities of alternatives. And this can be a really a good uh, recommendations how to make a decision. And after uh, motivate them, they are open and they are ready to use the HP and to use the NP for this kind of decision making in higher education institution. And it's the same thing with the companies in uh, Croatia. 
uh, I think that uh, they are ready right now for this kind of decision making because uh, corruption, transparency uh, in decision making in Croatia, uh, that was a huge problem in Croatia. But right now, um, I think that uh, we are ready because we were entering European Union and everything um, is changing. And now we are using also the HP in procurement processing and also uh, in some kind of uh, making strategic decisions also in government, uh, governmental level. Thank you. Thank you. I think that we have another question. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I was wishing that uh, when I was listening to you, I was just thinking my university, uh, how, what they are doing, how they reacted. And actually, that was one of the reasons I didn't want to teach this semester. I had this option. So, but some faculty don't have this option. So they have to teach. But there are a lot of faculty burnout. They just go on other universities or uh, if they have the opportunity, then they don't, they stop because it is so much workload. Yeah, and I wish there were some university administration here to listen to you. So yeah, uh, they sh they should. Uh, yeah, I wish yeah. we could arrange something so that they can listen to you. I'm quite probably they will just think they already know all these things. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I'm trying to prepare a lot of presentation for them and just mm -hmm. raise the awareness how important is rational decision making and group decision making based on this kind of approach by using rational decision making methods, using HP, uh, using this kind of approaches in, in decision making. And I think that right now, uh, motivation for using and implementing these approaches, I think that um, I, I think that I have the first results in Croatia. So I will see <laughs> what will be our <laughs> next steps. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think there's a question from Luis. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Very very interesting, and uh, it. Uh, it's good to see the, uh, the actual implementation of the HP process in a very complicated set setting, which is the academic world. So I can relate to that aspect of uh, trying to <clears throat> uh, get some kind of rationality in uh, academic programs and teaching programs. So congratulations that aspect. But uh, in my experience, I, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to bring uh, techniques such as the AHP into decision making. And you mentioned uh, some important aspect for me, which is readiness of the institutions to accept or and to utilize effectively certain technologies or procedures. So, could you elaborate more on how you assess or decide when the, those institutions were ready for accepting the HP? Mm -hmm. Yes, a real, really good question. Because I start with this, I think eight or nine years ago. And I think that uh, they were not ready um, eight or nine years ago in Croatia, in Croatia. I'm talking about Croatia. But right now, I think that there is a lot of factors. Uh, something is... Uh, there is a lot of factors, but right now um, we were entering European Union. We were uh, raising awareness with a lot of activities and projects uh, in these five years, how important it is to, um, to uh, implement this method for strategic planning and how important it is to uh, prepare strategy. And for us, it was important because you know that European Union, they are, um, they told us, okay, you must prepare this kind of strategies, you must define objectives, you must uh, prioritize alternatives, you must uh, define um, the resources uh, and all this. So that, that was our obligation in Croatia 
uh, because we were following European Union rules. And that influenced our culture. And also uh, now we, we maybe it's, it's organizational culture because of all these activities um, uh, in five years. And now I think that we are ready and we are understanding why, um, why, this, why implementation of these methods and why uh, strategic planning is important for us. And I think that our teachers, our researchers, uh, they understand why it's better to have uh, the priorities that are defined and that uh, are defined based on their own judgments. I think that this is the most important participation in decision making and their judgments as a part of our decision. And this is always the first that, I, um, that I, I'm using when I'm trying to motivate them to use the HP. Give us uh, and please participate in decision making and based on your judgments, we will make a decision. Uh, right now, I'm the Dean of the faculty and I'm really using the HP for some of strategic decisions. And uh, I'm carefully choosing participants for doing group decision making. And, uh, but after uh, finishing group decision making and presenting the results of group decision making by using uh, HP, I think that they are satisfied and we are doing analysis for individual decision making and group decision making. And after doing this, they are accepting decision and there is no problem. I know that this is Thank a you. really interesting topic, but we are already <laughs> in the break and 2.15 starts the next session. So maybe we, um, we can continue to... this discussion in uh, a little bit later. Yes, thank you very much, Nina. We appreciate it and everyone's participation thank here. You. It's good to see you again. And we will uh, move to the break now. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.